So we are on 24 now. Good. So x, f prime, f of x. I analyze, we already talked about it, domain all real numbers again. It's the cube root. We found critical number one, and the it came from f prime being undefined. I cannot write zero. This is the way I signify undefined. There is no number. I can't write anything. It doesn't exist. Okay. <clears throat> so I have to plug in one in the function. One minus one is zero. The cube root of zero is zero. Because here I would have said three negative seven is blah, blah, blah. But it's nothing. It's nothing. That the derivative doesn't change sign. Okay, so uh, back to my function. I realize that this is a number that is always positive. Always. This is positive. This is squared, which is positive. The cube root of positive is positive. Positive at the top, positive at the bottom, greater than zero. Very nice. One comma zero is not a point of extrema. The derivative does not change sign. Goodbye. Moving on. Uh, the next function was uh, 29. And uh, we had g of x as x squared over x squared plus 1. And we had g prime. Yeah, this is g prime. 2x over x squared plus 1 squared. And we found uh, the only critical number was 0. And it came from g prime being 0. Fine. g prime of x g of x, all real numbers, because x squared plus 1 is never 0, so the function is defined everywhere. I'm only interested in 0, and it comes from g prime being 0, so this is 0. I will plug in um, uh, 0 in the function, and I also get 0. So now I want to know 0 comma 0, what type of point it is. Aha! When I look at the derivative to study the sign, I will not look at this. It's always positive. I don't want to bother with it. Or two, this piece is the only piece that gives the sign. If this is negative, the whole derivative is negative. If this is positive, the whole derivative is positive. Nice. And here I forgot to say the function is always increasing because the derivative is always positive. Ah, okay, I see now. It's decreasing because it's negative. It's decreasing because the derivative is positive. And I know 0, 0 will be what kind of point? Anyone? Local minimum. Very good. Very good. This is typical. The derivative is negative, then positive, and right here is 0. Very good. So that was 29. So um, that was, no, that was not 29. Was that 29? Yeah, that was 29. No, this was 30. No. We did 30, and then we came back to 29. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so now 29. Where are you 29? This one has two critical numbers, so they are plus or minus 1. They come from g prime equals 0. I have to copy g of x. 4x over x squared plus 1. And I have to copy g prime as negative 4 x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1 squared. Perfect.
g prime first always g at the bottom I'm looking at this function is always defined no headache whatsoever I know that we found here two critical numbers we found a negative one from g prime being zero and one and g prime is zero again I refuse to study the sign of this piece or study the sign of four the sign is given by negative in front and x squared minus 1. I'm going to plug in a number here like negative 10. Negative 10 squared is 100 minus 1 is 99, but 99 with minus in front, I know the answer. I plug in 0, minus 1 times negative 1 is positive. I plug in 10, 10 squared, um, negative. I need to plug in negative 1 in the function and positive 1 in the function. When I plug in negative 1, the top is negative 4 and the bottom is 2. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. When I plug in 1, I have 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So now, I conclude this. Decreasing, increasing, decreasing. And now I have to establish if negative 1, negative 2 is anything and 1 comma 2 anything. And you tell me what you think they represent. Negative 1 comma negative 2 and 1 comma 2. What do they represent if anything? Is negative 1 and negative 2 uh, local of minimum? Yeah. Excellent. And then isn't that local of uh, maximum? Excellent. Thank you very much. And now I think we have one more function. So this was done. I think we also had 34, yes. So let's look at 34. So I will copy the function. I will copy f prime. And I will copy uh, x equals 0 we got. Critical number from uh, f prime being 0. Perfect. I look at the function is defined everywhere. X squared plus 1 is always positive, never 0. The square would always exist. It's never 0. Defined everywhere. Very nice. Very nice. They did not torture us with domain here. Everything was nice and clean. So 0. I know that f prime is zero, and now all I have to do is study the sign left and right of the zero of the critical number for the derivative. I refuse to look at this; it's always positive. I'm not going to bother with it. So to the left hand side, negative with minus in front will be positive. On the right hand side, positive five with minus in front, negative. When I plug in zero. I get 1, the square of 1 is 1, 1 over 1 is 1. So obviously this is the situation. And 0 comma 1 represents or it does not. Local maximum. Local maximum indeed. It could also be global, but we are not discussing that. We are just looking at, at uh, what can happen here. Okay. I would like to us to choose a problem uh, from 69 through um, 84. 
69 through 84, a problem in which it says draw a graph to match the description given. So they're giving us some information about a function and they want us to come up with a, a, a sample of a graph. There are more than there is more than one correct answer. So just graph a possibility. There is more than one correct answer. I'm looking at 80 and you can choose the next one. So in problem 80 they're giving us g of x they say has a positive derivative f prime of x is positive on negative infinity 0 union 3 to infinity and negative on in between 0 3 but they say g prime of 0 and g prime of 3 do not exist. It's, it says neither g prime of 0 nor g prime of 3 exist. G and it do not exist. In other words, the function is not differentiable at 0. So this is the meaning. g of x not differentiable at x equals 0 and 3. Okay, so let's do that. Yes, sorry, I'm using my table all the time. Okay, so Obviously, key uh, values are 0 and 3. They say that g prime um, does not exist at 0. They also say that g prime at 3 does not exist. But they also say... Any questions? Should I stop? Do you have a question for me? Anyone? But they also say... So this I took care of. But they also say that f prime is positive for negative infinity 0. Oops, that's not good. And 3 to infinity. And it's negative between 0 and 3. So then the function will be increasing and I can put whatever number I want in here. It doesn't matter. You choose. And um, it's decreasing to whatever. And then it's increasing. Good. So the function is increasing. Um, to zero, I'm going to say here. Between negative infinity and zero, the function is increasing. At this point, it has to have a cusp or a corner or a vertical tangent because the function exists, but that's my choice. The function exists, but the derivative does not. Good, so it's decreasing now. So this is 1, 2, 3. So it's decreasing to whatever. I'm going to put it here. But it has to have either a cusp or a corner at that point. It's not differentiable at 0. And it's not differentiable at 3. So it's decreasing, as you see, increasing between negative infinity and 0, decreasing between 0 and 3. And now it has to be increasing, but in such a way I cannot do this. Because that would be differentiable at this point, but I can do this. And now it's not differentiable at 3. And it's still increasing.
as recommended. So again, there is more than one correct answer here. You can come up with other functions.